Hi book lovers, welcome back to my channel. I have yet another 2022 related video. As you can tell from today's title, it's going to be a little interesting because I'm going to be talking about some books that disappointed me last year. They aren't all going to be one or two star reads just because I don't really give that many books those ratings, but they are going to be books that I didn't love as much as I expected to. I'm going to include some disappointing sequels, some disappointing reads from authors that I love and books that just weren't worth the hype. So to kick things off, I'm going to start with some disappointing sequels that I read. These are books that are part of some series that I love and they just weren't up to par. And a lot of these I was shocked by how I didn't love them because the other book or the other books in those series are amazing. So the first one here is Wed to the Wild God by Ruby Dixon. I am devastated that I didn't love this one because the first two books in the series are amazing. It's such a good fantasy romance series except for this third book. So it's the Aspect and Anchor series and book one is Bound to the Battle God which is my favorite. It is one of my all-time favorites from Ruby Dixon. It's such an excellent slow burn fantasy romance. Book two, which is also great, is Sworn to the Shadow God, but then something happened with book three that just lost its sort of magic. Because the first two books, what was great about them was their slow burn, but then in the third book, it didn't really have that. I'm just so sad this one didn't work for me because I do love the series. I love Ruby Dixon, though I haven't read her in a while, but I do always come back to the fantasy romance series because it's so good. They are chunky books, but she makes them worth it, except for this third one. I just could not get into the hero or the heroine. They definitely didn't have the same charm as the first two couples. And then another sequel that I was disappointed by, I kind of expected it, honestly, but I still deep down still wanted to enjoy it a lot more but it is it starts with us by colleen hoover this is a sequel to it ends with us which i really enjoyed way back when i read it and i wanted to love this one because the thing that was missing for me from it ends with us was the actual romance the happily ever after and we do get it here but it's very very underwhelming it honestly could have just been a quick short little novella that we could have revisited but instead it's a full-length book and there's not much to it it's not you know the worst thing ever but i definitely didn't enjoy it as much as the first book it's one of those sequels where you read it and you're like yeah that wasn't actually really that necessary. If you want my full review of this book, I do have a video on it on my channel. Another disappointing sequel for me was a sequel to a book that I loved in 2021. It was one of my top favorites of the year and I was so excited to get to the next book, but it didn't live up to my expectations. This is The Company of Fiends by Catherine Moon. This is a monster romance, historical romance, and a reverse harem romance. I was obsessed with book one, A Lady of Rick's Great Manor. That book blew me away and made me an instant fan of Catherine Moon's, so I went and read a whole bunch of her other stuff. But then when this one came out, it was a genuine struggle to get through. It's longer than book one and not in a good way. It felt like there wasn't much of a plot to it. It was just a lot of filler, basically a ton of sex scenes that got really tiring to read after a while. And I also felt like we didn't get to know all the heroes as much as we got to know the heroes in book one. It felt more like we only knew the surface of these characters. So I'm really sad about how this one turned out. We are getting a third book in the series and I'm just praying that it won't be as long and as boring as this one. And then I have to include an L. Thorpe book. I'm very surprised I didn't like this one because I love L. Thorpe. I've been binging all her stuff since I discovered her, but this one book is so far her worst book for me. It's the final book, the third and final book in her St. View Psycho series, which is It Ends With Violence. I was super excited to read the series, first of all, because it's about Vincent. Vincent was introduced in the previous series, the St. View Prison 
series. He was one of the prisoners. He had such an interesting character. He has a split personality. His Vincent personality is shy and quiet and sweet, but then his other personality, Scythe, is a psychopath. He is a murdering psycho and is the reason why Vincent was sent to prison in the first place. So I was excited to read more about him, read about how he and two other guys fall in love with the same girl. And the first two books, they were good. Not my favorites from Elthar, but still solid. But then something happened with the third and final book that just derailed everything. Honestly, I felt so bad for Vincent in the third book because it really felt like everyone loved Scythe a lot more than Vincent and he was just not getting the love that he deserved so I just constantly felt bad for him. He deserved so much better than what he got especially when he was of the three guys. He was the one who was most into the heroine and into the romance. Also the plot of this book was all over the place so that didn't help either but it was mostly how everyone treated Vincent and that really let me down about this book. And then this last sequel that I have before I get into all the other disappointments of the year. This one it actually pains me to include because I... Oh, I mean, again, I really wanted to love it. Book one was my obsession. I have reread the first book a million times. I pretty much have that book memorized. And we had like a four or five year hiatus between the first and second book. So it took a long time for the sequel to come out. And the way just kept hyping it up for me, but I gotta say I didn't love Bitter Secrets by Mia Knight quite as much as Bitter Heat. Bitter Heat is one of my all-time favorite books, one of my all-time favorite romances. It is angsty and dark. It's about a formerly married couple and the hero is just obsessed with getting her back. He's kind of a sociopath. We still don't really know what he is, but he's he's built different. So I loved Roth, I loved Jasmine in Bitter Heat, and I was so excited to get more of them in Bitter Secrets, but the thing that brought this book down for me, it wasn't bad. I still enjoyed myself somewhat, but I didn't like that it was extremely slow paced. It takes place over the course of four weeks. We get one month for this book. It's a tiny little blip in their overall romance. We're getting four books total, and the second book is only a month long. It's the first month of Roth and Jasmine's marriage again and it moves really slowly. We get the day-to-day -day details which are a lot. We don't get much of a plot but I did really love that we get some flashbacks here for the first time. We get flashbacks of Roth and Jasmine meeting for the first time and falling in love for the first time which I really appreciated. I love that insight to the romance that we didn't really get in the first book. So that was my favorite part about this book, but I couldn't deal with the fact that this book, then nothing really happens in this book. All right, moving on to some other books by authors that I love, but unfortunately their 2022 releases were not it. These are books that didn't work for me as much as I wanted them to, even though I've enjoyed and loved a bunch of their books in the past these were disappointments. This first one could technically be a disappointing sequel, but it's more like a spin-off. It is The Wedding Crusher by Mia Sosa. This is the standalone spin-off to The Worst Best Man. It's Dean's book. I loved Dean in The Worst Best Man, but then in his own book, he was such a letdown. In the first book, he was hilarious and adorable and so charming, but he lost all of that in The Wedding Crasher. I didn't feel anything from him. I liked the heroine a little bit more, but at the same time, I wasn't really feeling their chemistry. I wasn't getting into their fake dating romance. I love the trope, but it sadly wasn't working in this book. I just had such high expectations for this one because of how much I enjoyed The Worst Best Man and enjoyed Dean's character that this one not being as good as I expected really had me feeling bummed about it. I'm still glad we got Dean's book but it just wasn't as good as I thought it was gonna be. And then I have to include Elle Kennedy because what the heck was Good Girl Complex? I don't know if this is because it's with a publisher that it just felt off but it wasn't good. It's a noodle romance but in the most boring way. There's nothing really unique about it or special. I mean it's fine if you're looking for some average noodle romance I guess but this book coming from the author of the off-campus series which I love 
it's kind of shocking. The second book in the series was a little bit better at least. It was a little bit more interesting but yeah Good Girl Complex. I don't know what happened but it was not good. I was also very disappointed by the new Julie Garwood. She finally made her comeback, or at least her ghostwriter did, and Grace Under Fire was so strange. It was such a weird read. It read like it was written in the 90s or something. It read really old. The main character read really old. She I guess they wanted to make her an old soul. She's in her early 20s, but she acted 50, and that wasn't exactly fun to read. Honestly, they should have just aged her up, and it probably could have been more enjoyable. The romance was okay. It definitely didn't have that Julie Garwood charm that I love in her books, and I have read one other Julie Garwood contemporary romance, one of her romantic suspenses. It was actually the last book she put out before she dropped off the planet and I love that book so I expected to love Grace Under Fire as well but I didn't. I don't know if Julie Garwood is coming out with more books after this one but I guess for now I'm just gonna stick with her old school historical romances. And then another author that I love, I was so excited to read her very first reverse harem romance. I mean, I love reverse harem, as you may be able to tell. This was the author's first try into this trope, and I was so looking forward to it, but then it kind of let me down when I got to it. It's Happenstance by Tessa Bailey. Normally I love Tessa Bailey, I love her indie stuff, but this is definitely my least favorite I've read so far. I love her over the top, instantly obsessed and instantly in love heroes, but here with three of them, in theory it should have worked, or at least in theory it sounded good, but they just didn't really mesh all that well as a group, at least for me. It felt a little disjointed, a little forced. They went from being possessive and wanting the heroine for his own to all of a sudden, okay, we're gonna actually be a group now. If we can't have you individually, we'll have you all together. And it kind of just happened too abruptly for me, especially when they're all strangers. They all meet on this little cable car. So the idea was there. It just wasn't executed well enough for me. And then speaking of books that sounded good in theory, but were horribly executed, I have two books by new to me authors that I tried in 2022. They're both summary beach reads that had a lot of hype. I kept seeing people loving these books so I was like okay let me give them a try but they were not good. I was very disappointed by them. The first one is The Roughest Draft by Emily Wibberly and Austin Sigmund Broca. This book reminded me a lot of Beach Read by Emily Henry which is why I wanted to read it and I was looking forward to it but the characters were horrible. They were borderline pathetic. I guess you're supposed to feel bad for them because of the situation that they've gotten themselves into but I had no sympathy for them. They got themselves into this mess, this whole miscommunication mess. They are co-authors that had a falling out but they're forced to write together again for this book that they're contracted for and they were so unlikable I couldn't stand them. So that was such a disappointment. And then the other book, the other beachy read, is Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. This book reminded me of Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren, which was why I wanted to read it. And it ended up being basically a ripoff, but in a much worse way, because I loved Love in Other Words. It's one of my favorite Christina Lauren books. But the way Every Summer After was written, the way that it was so much more focused on the past than in the present, I couldn't really enjoy it. I think a majority of the book, a majority of the chapters are set in the past, which doesn't really make sense to me because you kind of want to know the present day romance because that's really all that matters. And then what I also couldn't understand was how in the present day it literally takes place over the course of a weekend. The main characters, they were in love, but they haven't seen each other in a decade. But then all of a sudden, in two days, they are back in love and live happily ever after. I call bullshit. I did not believe a second of it, so I just 
couldn't handle this book. And then the last few books I have on my list of disappointing reads are popular books that just weren't worth the hype. Most of these authors I read for the first time as well in 2022, so that wasn't all that great. But I'll start off with the author that I have read before, which is Kate Stewart. I read Flock, the first book in her Ravenhood series, and this book is huge. It has a an almost cult-like following to it, which is a little ironic given what the book is about, but literally every time I've heard people talking about this book and this series, it's nothing but glowing, raving, reviews and they talk about it in a way where I just could not help but guess that someone ends up dying in the series. So that was also partly ruined for me but the book itself I hated the heroes. I hated Dom and Sean so so much because of how condescending they were to the heroine. They're part of the secret society and they were just constantly putting Cecilia down because they didn't feel like she deserved to join them. They didn't think that she was good enough for them or for the society and it was so annoying to read. They had hot sex together but that was about it. That was all that I really enjoyed about it. Dom is also a huge dick but of course the heroine cannot stay away from him. And then Sean got annoying with how much he couldn't stop talking about how the government is listening to you, they're following you through your phone, your computer, blah blah blah. I was like, okay, relax, dude. So I hated these guys. I ended up reading some spoilers for the rest of the series because I was not going to continue with it. And I'm glad I did because I found out what happens with Dom and Sean and oh my gosh. If I actually read the second book, I know I would have hated it even more than Flock. And then I tried Nikki St. Crow for the first time. I read The Never King, which is a big series. People kept hyping it up as this dark, sexy Peter Pan retelling that's also reverse harem, which to me sounded great, but I could not get into it. First off, it's really short. It's almost like a serial series. Each book is a short novella and there is no sort of development for anything because it's so short. The heroes were thrown in and as soon as I finished I could not have told you who these guys were except for Hook. I think that's his name, the leader of the guys because he was the only one that really got any screen time. The plot, the story also wasn't making much sense though I'm sure if I continue with the series I would have understood it better but this first book was enough for me. I didn't enjoy the writing, I didn't enjoy the characters, so uh, this book it was popular but not worth the hype for me. And then another book that is insanely popular that blew up everywhere that was so hyped was The Fine Print by Lauren Asher and this popular book did not live up to the hype for me. I saw a lot of good reviews for this series as well and I thought I was gonna enjoy it just because it sounded good. The series sounded fun. It's about these three brothers, these three billionaire brothers who basically own this corporation that's an alternate Disney and each guy wants to receive his inheritance but in order to do so he has to jump through a ton of hoops. But I did not enjoy the writing here. It felt a little amateur. I also didn't really like the characters that much either. Their romance felt really forced. I was feeling no chemistry. I didn't understand how the heroine even fell in love with the hero because he wasn't giving anything to the romance. So this book was not it for me, though I was very shocked by how much I enjoyed the sequel to it. Terms and Conditions was so much better than the fine print. I, I don't know how the writing is so different between the two books, but if you are contemplating reading the series, I would recommend just Terms and Conditions. And then my last two books are dark romances. They are pretty big books by some big authors. These are books by authors that I had never read before, so it was my first time reading them, my first time trying them, and obviously given the topic of today's video, <laughs> they didn't go so well. I'll start off with the better one of the two, which is Sicko by Amo Jones. This one wasn't terrible, but I really wanted to like it more because the beginning had me hooked. I was loving the beginning. It's a dark, taboo, forbidden romance between adopted siblings. The heroine was adopted, fostered into the hero's family when she was dropped at their doorstep as an infant. And I loved how protective and obsessed the hero was over her. So the beginning was great, but then 
somehow it just turned all downhill from there. I don't know what happened. It all came crashing down. I couldn't believe that the story changed so much, especially when I was loving how it was going. But then the author thought it was a great idea to start throwing as many plots as she could think of into the story. And it just wasn't working. It became an MC romance, a motorcycle club romance. It became some sort of revenge story. It became some sex trafficking story. I don't know. It was not meshing well. If the book had focused on one aspect, on one of these plot points, I think it could have gone so much better. But no, there was just too much going on that it ruined the story for me. And then the final book I have on this list is probably the worst book that I ever read in 2022. It's The Ritual by Chantal Tessier. This is another dark romance. It's a noodle romance. It's set in college and it's all about this secret society at the school that was so dumb. It's pretty much a secret society, a secret club for rich, bored boys. They have nothing better to do than to join this club so that they can start killing people. I don't know. I really didn't understand the point of this club. I also felt zero romance here. How this heroine ever fell in love with the hero, I will never understand because he really saw her as nothing more than a pet that he owned. The book was supposed to be kinky and hot, but I was just cringing the whole way through. Maybe it was because the characters felt really young. I mean, they, they are really young. They're 20, 21, 22, but none of it worked for me. I could barely get through reading this book. It really was a struggle to get through. I think it was the only one star read or at least one of the few one star reads that I gave in 2022. So those were some of the most disappointing reads of 2022 for me. I'm interested to hear what some of your disappointing reads of last year were, if we share any of the same disappointments, or maybe you ended up loving some of the books that I talked about. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. I hope this video was somewhat enjoyable, even though I'm just talking about books that I didn't love. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Bye!